This has been a good week as far as I'm concerned because we've had a whole flurry of uh, results from basically genetic studies showing that humans are under selection pressure and have been and that uh, all living things are and this affects amongst other organs their brain. So first of all rather interesting story about human beings who can swim underwater and hold their breath for about 13 minutes and having done so for generations and generations, they've adapted in two very interesting ways. One is um, their bodies seem to have changed. They seem to have larger chests and lungs. The thing which one can track to a genetic change is that they have larger spleens. And this allows them to pump more oxygen into their bodies when they're underwater. They also have another adaptation, which is that the um, iris reflex, uh, the sort of thing which makes one light adapt, has become accelerated in their case. Once diving into water, they can very quickly open the pupil of their eyes so as to get more light in as they go deep, and they do go quite deep. So here we have a clear indication that uh, selective forces are operating on human beings and this is visible in the present time. But oddly enough, another little story, different in character, and of course this one's about birds, uh, shows that uh, birds have, um, well, a dilemma that in order to keep alive they've got to keep eating insects and um, any part of the world which is seasonal uh, presents them with a challenge. If they stay where they are, then they have to learn how to adapt to the very bitter winter circumstances which will assault them, or they have to fly uh, to um, new and warmer places as the seasons demand. Both those, I think, are quite uh, difficult um, uh, options to consider. The question is, um, which of these two strategies would lead to the larger brain? Well, from genetic theory, we'd say brain is costly. You have to really shut down some other things if you're going to have a large brain. And sure enough, it seems that those who do migrations are smaller brained, still achieve a great deal. Those who stay put have larger brains, and presumably they need those larger brains to remember the things which are required when one lives in colder climates. So... Um, the brain-body trade-off in birds is evident. The fact that human beings can adapt and show a genetic signature because of these adaptations has also come up. And, of course, we've had in uh, the most recent week a reworking of the Piffer equation. This is the David Piffer equation, in which he attempts to uh, predict group average IQs on the basis of one genetic score. He makes up this score in a simple fashion. He looks at all the studies which associate the genome with intelligence, and these are virtually all of them in European populations. And looking at all these studies, he picks out those which have um, genes in common, that is, he makes a score out of the habitual perennials, the ones which always show up in these studies. Now, even though in theory those are just informative about um, Europeans, um, he applies this general score, a factor analysis of all these uh, um, loadings on particular snippets of genetic code, into a predictive equation, and the match between his predictive equation and the observed uh, group average IQs for different uh, genetic groups, they correlate 0.9, which is extraordinary. Now, we need to check this, check this in two ways. Once, one way is check through his all his figures to make sure that the claim of 0.9 correlation, an extraordinarily high correlation, is absolutely validated. And he's made all his workings available so that they can be checked, and they are being checked at the moment by uh, people who are interested in such matters. The other, of course, test is to apply them to much larger um, samples, other samples other than the ones he's studied. And here we couldn't um, have help from people who have access to those databases so that one could check them further. But um, it seems to be the case that one can put forward a formula uh, which is essentially 
a single factor which loads on a whole lot of um, snippets of code which pick up selective pressures. They're not all the SNPs you need in order to predict individual um, IQs. They are simply indicators of selective pressures and they stand in for lots of other SNPs uh, which have been shaped up for intelligence. So uh, three little stories then. One, people can hold their breath underwater and have a genetic advantage which can be shown in the genome in order to do that. Birds making a choice about whether to migrate or not and finding that the stay-at-homes have larger brains because they have to cope with more variable circumstances, one would suppose. And finally, the Piffer equation, which shows that um, one factor has a very good predictive power when looking at the average intelligence of different genetic groups. So, quite a week. Thanks for listening.